1. Like with all things retail, the customers make things either interesting or boring. But we all know how out of touch with reality some can be. Like all other stores, we also have a rewards program across our family brands. At the time this incident happened, we were only limited to viewing. If a customer had rewards to use or not, only after they had accumulated them in $5 increments. This was done by entering their number. We couldn't see their points or how far they were away from the next reward. That could only be viewed by them online and over the phone through the brand's customer service. As with all things coupons go, they may also receive it on email as a scannable code and sometimes depending on the sales, they can get another discount code they could use. But sometimes a scannable one wasn't always up to date, especially if they had just used it in the last day or two. This couple came to my register and I started ringing them up. The lady was on her phone while the guy set out their stuff. I had him enter their number and saw that he didn't have a coupon. It was at this point the lady interjected that she saw a code in her email. I kept scanning and folding the rest of their purchase as she looked on her phone. I was down to the last items when the lady picked up a phone call. Considering that she hadn't shown me anything within the time that it took me to scan, fold, and bag everything, I assumed she couldn't find any. It happens. But I still like to ask once more if there are any coupons that they want to add. Now I didn't want to interrupt her FaceTime, but just confirm what I thought. I gave her a total, then said, Would you like to apply any other coupons that you may have? No, I don't think so said the guy. He turned to look at his partner who didn't respond or add anything to this conversation. Okay, well, then I gave him the total. Will it be cash or card? He paid by card and I started handing him his bags of clothes and lastly the one with the receipt. This is what caught her attention. Hey, you didn't give me a chance to look for my coupon. What the fuck? Honestly, this transaction was long and at the start of the transaction... You said you checked the coupon. I asked once more before you paid. But one thing I learned was never say sorry, but see how you can make things better. If you have any coupons to use, I can redo the purchase for you. She ignored me once again and told whomever she was on the phone with that we are so impatient and that they shouldn't shop at our store location. As they left without comment, it was only nice of me to wish them a good weekend ahead. The guy was decent enough to say thanks and was pretty chill. I had a long line to get through. 2. For some context, the store that I currently work at to pay for college is two stores in one building, and they're both retail stores. The store that I work for is a home and furniture store, while the other store is a clothing and beauty product store. You would think that this would make it a hot spot for entitled people. But so far, I never really dealt with anyone like that. Most people that shop at our store are home designers and couples looking for new furniture until a couple days ago. So the building was built before our company bought it. So the break room was in the other store near the back. So the employees from both stores would go there to clock in and take breaks. I had come in and started to head to the break room to clock in for my shift, when I hear someone calling me from behind. We'll call her Entitled Lady, and the conversation goes like this. Now I probably should have mentioned, but the most expensive name brand product the other store has is Adidas, so they didn't have a lot of expensive brand named items. Just things you'd probably find in, like a Ross. I'm dumbfounded. I'm sorry, did you say Gucci? Yes, I saw a woman leave the store with one and want to know where the others are. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm not sure myself. You see, I work at the other store, so I don't know what products they have there. I'm heading to the break room now, so I could probably find an employee to help you, but I don't think they sell that brand. B.S. Excuse me? You work for this building, so you must know where everything is. Plus, I know I saw some woman walk out of this store with one in tow. So either show me where the Gucci bags are now, or I'll have you fired. Yes, you are correct, ma'am. I do work for the building, but I only work for Halfreys or Interior Designs, so I only know the inventory of that store, not this one. As for what you saw that woman with, she probably bought it from another store and just brought it in 
making you think she got it from here. So now if you'll excuse me, I need to clock in for my shift. She then gets in between me and the small hallway leading to the break room. Don't give me that crap, you're just trying to get out of working and be lazy. Either get me my Gucci bag or I'll get your manager. I'm fed up with this woman. Okay, there at the front, see if I care. I pushed past her and got into the break room before she could start giving me another earful. Thank God, pin pad locks. However, our story is not done, and as you could probably guess, I had another run-in with this woman. It was maybe a week or so after our first encounter. It was the weekend, and I had come in for an early shift around ten or so, and had clocked out for the day. It's part-time, so I only work a certain number of hours. Normally, when I get these early shifts, I tend to browse the stores to see if there's anything nice. For that day, it was Mother's Day tomorrow, and decided to see if I could get my mom something and use that sweet employee discount. So, I'm in the other store, looking through some clothes and other stuff. I have my apron, basically the store's uniform, in hand, so a couple people are coming up to me and asking questions. Being nice, I try to help the best I can with some people apologizing for thinking I was still on the clock. I start looking through the bags when I hear a loud, YOU! coming from beside me. I look over and see the entitled lady from before. Oh, brother. What the hell are you doing here? Oh, you again. Well, I'm trying to find something nice for my mom since it's Mother's Day tomorrow, so if you could please leave me alone, I would really appreciate it. What? You're shopping while you should be working? I can't believe you. First you don't help me, then you try to steal from me. I'm not wanting to deal with this, so I say, look, I already told you, I don't work here. Plus, my shift ended like a few minutes ago, so I'm free to shop here if I like. How dare you speak to me like that? And I know you're still working here. You were helping those people just a second ago, so quit being lazy and help me. You know what? No, no, I won't help someone who's so incredibly rude to retail workers that she can't get it past her tiny brain that just because someone works for the building doesn't mean they work for both stores, so F off. I start heading for the door, and she follows me screaming incoherently. I hear her stop screaming and turn around to see she fell on her face after tripping on a display stand. I wanted to say something, but decided against and just walked away. Moral of the story... Be nice to people who work in retail, or the store will fight back. 3. So in 2020, during lockdown in my province, I, 19 at the time, 21, male now, was in my local Walmart's Lego section looking for the new 2020 City and Speed Champion sets just for something to do during lockdown. Anyways, I was grabbing the new set, setting it down in my cart along with my other crap. It was crap. When? A wild Karen makes her way through the Walmart summer seasonal wilderness. Four sets set. There were five others, but the Karen gave no shits. And it is now hoedown, showdown. This lady asked me why I was taking the set away and to stop. Karen, sorry, I don't work here, but there's five others right there, and I point if you want one. No, 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 you don't understand. I want that one. Don't take it away. Stop cleaning up and go clean somewhere else. Karen, there's no point getting upset. I just told you there are five other sets, and I don't work here. I'm not cleaning up. I'm buying this set. Sorry. I walked away into the Transformers aisle to see if any of the new toys come in, so I can talk about them in my podcast. Karen disappeared into the Walmart night, so I figured all is over, right? Right? <sighs> nope. Fuck. Karen returns dragging a Walmart employee who knows me. This one right here. He's cleaning up these sets and I want that one for my kid. Make him stop. My buddy and I both say, Ma'am, he doesn't work here. The wild Karen is not satisfied, but backs off to prepare for tirades. My buddy and I talk for a bit, catch up, and then I go off to the clearance aisle. Honestly, I know we shouldn't bow down to the Karens and Kens of the world, but fuck, I should have just left. Karen waits till I'm looking at something and steals my whole fucking cart. 
I have a lot of anxiety, so people getting in my bubble freaks me out. Whoa, what the fuck? That's my cart, lady. No, stop lying. You're cleaning up. This is mine now. Quick note. I'm bigger. Big enough to tackle a few people and lay them out. My size also comes with extreme caution, as I don't like hurting people. I also have the anxiety, and I don't like confrontations. When Karen grabbed my cart, I knew I had four choices to choose from. One, do something stupid. Two, try talking to the wild Karen again. Three, follow her until I flag down an employee. Or four, walk away and grab someone. Luckily, the universe worked it out for me. Cue my observant buddy. My buddy, at this point, is speaking with the store manager, so he was in the area. The manager knows me, just because I've gone there with family almost every weekend well over ten years to this Walmart. It's a good Walmart, by the way. And he was able to bring him over to the situation. At this point, I was able to wince my cart back and just handed Emperor Karen the damn set. My buddy and manager spoke to the brick-headed Karen, and apparently this is what went down. Karen thought I was a cleaner because I quote, He's a grown man in the Lego aisle who shouldn't be there and should be working instead of looking. Doesn't work here, miss, said the manager. Wow, you too. His cart is filled with random things. He's obviously a cleaner. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to take this for my son and have a good day. Please don't cover for him and reprimand him. Okay then, miss. He then followed her to make sure she actually left, and I got my set, my random crap, and left. Never seen her since, but like WTF. Don't touch someone else's stuff. Also, if someone isn't wearing anything close to Walmart colors or a vest, they don't work at Walmart. By the way, this ain't even the worst Karen story I have. I've had homophobic Karens, more Lego Karens, button Karens. I have a lot of pins and buttons on my bag. EB Games, now GameStop, Hot Topic, and Spencer's Karens. And you're too old for that, Karens. One more worse than the next. R.I.P. I kind of felt bad for that kid. Considering I didn't even see them, I'm gonna go with they probably stayed home to avoid Karens entitlement BS. Now you might disagree with me handing her the set. And yes, admittedly, handing her the She-Devil set was... No means my finest hour. The pandemic has exposed me to the bottom of the barrel of humanity, so I know how to handle Karens now. Not to say that I've been entitled with not being exposed to Karens. I've had my few spats here and there, but this one is where it blew me away. Now, after two years of, I can do an act however I want and fuck everyone else, I know how to handle the Karens and Kens of the world. Stay firm, don't give in, and threaten the cops. Though I do have a major distrust with police, so I'll only call them if I'm sure the person needs it. If not, I walk away. I also agree that I should have fucking did something, as some might be thinking, but I feel like them making her go away was the best option. I wanted to scream about my personal belongings in my bag, but as she was acting off, I assumed she might have some mental issues and didn't want to scare her, if that's alright to say, and something I should have added before. Besides the obvious entitlement she felt, she was skittish but moving like one does when possessed in a horror film. I honestly should have said it before. Besides my anxiety, her behavior just made me want to make her go away. As I said, while I'm a big dude, the question of what if she was going to do rattled around my brain. Also looking back, I agree the manager kind of filled me. Also, this Walmart's only security is a big-ass man who sat at the front making sure the proper amount of people are let in. Since I'm from Canada, so not really any shootings in stores, so unarmed security. Though this big guy was a Walmart employee as well. I failed in giving in to the Karen. I'll take that as my responsibility. I fucked up and don't get me wrong. I also want to thank people who gave me that slight nudge of you fucked up. I never saw that lady again, but since I'm not really the religious type, I'll take this psycho as a message from the universe, being like, yeah, you're gonna have to deal with this shit a lot. Her excuses, of course, were complete BS. Random shit in people's carts are the point of shopping. I'm now imagining her cart must have been filtered alphabetically, or from biggest thing to smallest. But I don't remember seeing her cart. 
4. For some background, I work at a blue pet store in the same plaza as a well-known shopping center with a big red circle for a logo. My store closes about an hour earlier than the red store, so sometimes after work I'll pop over there to grab last-minute things like drinks and snacks, maybe browse for a new shirt. Because the store I work at closes so closely to when this store does, usually by the time I wrap up my closing duties at work, I only have half an hour to get down to the red store, find what I want, and check out before their store also closes for the night. Obviously, this leaves me no time to change out of my work uniform of a blue polo and cocky pants before I go into another store. I should also note that I am partially hard of hearing, and I frequently have to ask people to repeat themselves or speak up, since I don't hear them very clearly the first time. On to the actual story. So one night after work, I needed to swing by the red store to pick up some hair dye, and figured after I grabbed that, I'd take a look at some of the clearance shirts. I walked past one lady who recognized me from the blue pet store I had just come from, and she asked if I knew my way around this store too. I said sort of, helped her find the clothing section she was looking for, and went back to my shopping. I had finally gotten to the clearance section in the women's clothing, when this lady behind me loudly says, Ugh, Miss, excuse me. And I turn around and see the scowling woman pushing a full cart in my direction. You left this in the middle of the walkway. How are people supposed to get where they need to go? Anyways, I need help finding something. I pause and put on my customer service and talking to people I don't know voice. I pushed the cart back towards her and said, Oh, sorry. I think you have the wrong person. I didn't have a cart with me, and I actually don't work here. The lady says something, but I couldn't hear her, so I leaned forward and asked her if she could say it again. I figured that if it was an easy-to-identify item, I could at least point her to the general direction of the store, where that might be located. She huffs and walks around the cart to get in my face and speak again. Look, I have places to be. I don't have time for this. First you leave your junk in my way, then you act stupid and waste my time. You retail workers are so entitled these days, you have no respect for your customers anymore. I already told you what I need help with. Just tell me where it is, and I won't get your manager involved. I was backed into a rack of clothes, and, being tired from my shift at my actual place of employment, I kind of snapped and said, Respectfully, ma'am. I don't work here. I don't know what you're looking for, and I'm just trying to do my own shopping. I can help you find someone who does work here, but if that's the attitude you're gonna have, that's all I'm gonna do. She starts going off about how unhelpful I am, and that they need to reprimand me for my behavior. But thankfully, I was able to cut her off and point out the blue pet store's logo that was clearly on the front of my shirt, and explain that I just got off work, and I was shopping too. She looked dumbfounded that not all people in polo shirts and cockies are employees for every store they go into. Eventually, our argument got the attention of a couple of red store employees who were able to defuse the situation and were super nice about everything. One of them walked her away to show her where the thing she needed was and the other two stayed with me to get my side of the story. Again, they were super nice and very sweet about the whole interaction and even offered to walk with me to the registers in case she came back. Bless them. It was a really long day for me, and I can't imagine how many rude people they'd already had to deal with that day. I decided to skip looking for shirts and just went and bought my hair dye so I could go home already. I still don't understand how seeing someone in a bright blue shirt carrying a box of hair dye meant to her that I was an employee of a store where every employee wears red. 5. Caution. The following story is not snack-friendly. Oop. A long, long time ago, when I lived far away in another state, I went to a superstore much like Walmart. I arrived via city bus, so my bladder and other was kind of full, and I had to go real bad. As I walked through the sliding doors, the smell of rancid shit invaded my nose. Now, I have been farting as I was walking, so I was scared I sharted myself. I quickly shuffled to the nearest restroom, 
When I arrived, however, there was a mountain of shit piled in the middle of the room. Apparently, the smell I smelled wasn't my own shorts, it was this. Now let me tell you, this pile looked like someone walked a horse into the store and roped it to a stall to let the animal empty its entire bowels out onto the bathroom floor. So I noped out of there so fast and quickly found a worker. I told him what I found, and he groaned. <sighs> I don't know why he keeps doing that on the floor. Say what now? I asked. There's this homeless guy, he starts to explain. He comes in to use the bathroom, normally we don't care, but something happens so that he just walks in, drops his drawers, and shits right there. Sorry for the French. No, it's fine. For that pile, I think shit is too soft a word. He snickered and walked into the restroom. When I turned to head to the other restroom, I heard the poor guy scream obscenities and, How much shit can one guy hold? Halfway to the other restroom, I heard over the speaker, and I kid you not. Hazmat suit in men's room restroom by the exit. Hazmat suit cleaning, please. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Adventures in Fast Food and Retail, episode 158. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use and sent in stories for use in this video. If you'd like to send in a story yourself, then you can reach me at kingofthecities at gmail.com. That's kingofthecities at gmail.com. And you can find that in the description of every video. Uh, please do share the video around if you get a moment. I, I appreciate it when you do so. Okay, let's see. We are on Wednesday already. Ooh, okay, well, apparently, apparently that creeped up on us. By the end of the week before you know it. Right, let's see. Hal Freezer's question of the day. All right, as it's a retail video, let's keep it on theme. What is one store that you don't like, but you still go in there because they have things that you like? In my case, it's a store in Airdrie called Poundland. I'll give you a minute to, to stop laughing. Yes, it's called Poundland. We use pounds in the UK. Okay, well done. Right, okay. Uh, and while I've never really liked the store, they actually closed down a location a few years back and then reopened one about a year or so ago in a, in a different building. Still don't like it. Uh, but they do sell things I do like. Like They sell their own version of... Uh, it's basically a knockoff Toblerone in white chocolate, and they're really nice. They're only a pound. So I go in there to buy those. And that's about the only thing I go in for. But otherwise, I just don't really enjoy the stores themselves. And I'm sure we all have places like that, or... Maybe it's just me. Oh God, is it just me? Anyway, let me know what yours are in a comment below. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening. And take very good care of yourself.